got into the whole lifestyle and the whole barber lifestyle probably about four years ago when I started realising that you didn't just have to specifically be in a shop. Not so much in the UK, there wasn't so much a barber movement, but in America there was. And then when Instagram came around, that literally just opened up the floodgates. Um, I started realising that there was other people like me that didn't want to just place themselves in a barber shop and it to like, branch out. And there's also other guys that were kind of heavily tattooed and into music and skating and all that kind of lifestyle that goes along with it. And then it just opened up. The reason I became a barber really was I was working in the restaurant and I think I was, I was striving to do something more creative. I wanted to actually be a, a tattoo apprentice um, so I entered that and go into a shop and they took me to a tattoo convention and it wasn't until I actually saw Paul barbering and, and see the movement behind it that I decided that it, it, looked, it looked amazing and it really inspired me to do something for myself. I was basically with quite a bad group of friends, uh, just constantly in and out of trouble, just getting in trouble with the police, um, bringing police to the door all the time. I guess I can't say I was like, um, you know, born to do it or wanted to do it from an early stage. I rang Paul, um, who is a relative of mine, that I kind of, you know, looked at the whole lifestyle behind it and looked at what they was actually doing. And it just kind of like, it inspired me a lot. I don't know what it was, it just kind of like a natural sort of flair. The whole barber life and me becoming a barber, it generated from me kind of growing up and my father always kind of letting me do my own thing for a number of years. He kind of sat me down and he was just like, right, you've had enough fun. It's time to get serious now. And he said, and one other thing, I want you to be happy. You need to make yourself happy. So I kind of followed his advice and got introduced to a hairdresser and then after about six, seven months of hanging around with him, I turned around and I was just like, I want to change my career, I want to get a trade and I want to be happy. I really feel from the first time I picked up a pair of scissors, it was literally, that was my tool, which seems, which seems crazy now because all those years my mum and my sister were like, oh, why don't you try hairdressing? You know, why don't you go into the family trade? I, I think at the time I, I wanted to do something purely for my own benefit and to find my own feet. I'd always kind of thought about it. I used to cut like my, my dad and my brother's hair and stuff. And then, um, yeah, it's kind of stuck in like a, in a retail job, thinking about kind of what, what can I do and kind of I ended up with a lot of tattoos from being in bands and playing music and I was kind of like I'm quite limited to what I can do. And then, um, yeah, just like met Paul through like a, a mutual friend and stuff and then started chatting and, and just went from there really. You know, the whole lifestyle of barbering is what I want to be involved in strongly. Um, and you know, Paul and stuff is, is involved in that and networked with a lot of other barbers. So, you know, that was that was something I want to hugely be a part of. It took forever. This was literally like an empty shop and this is why we wanted to go for it. It just took forever. And they were like saying, right, you know, like when when can we move up here? And I didn't know. So it was probably the most stressful thing that I've had to do in barbering. You don't really know how it's gonna go. You know, like you, you kind of move away from your comfort zone. And then you've come here and then you're in a new area. You have to kind of start again. I was worried about constantly moving because I've moved three times within one year. So you worried about that, seeing if you know clients are still coming to follow you and stuff. But luckily, in touch wood and fingers crossed, you know, like people have respect us enough and believe in us, and they just um, and they followed and, and we just carry on and build the, you know, build the brand and the shop from there. The launch party was amazing. It just it just blew up. We did almost 70 haircuts throughout the day. We had like five rotating barbers throughout the day. People stayed for hours and hours and hours and just watched and watched everybody cut. And there was no kind of, when am I gonna get cut? Or I've been waiting ages. There's none of that. It's just everyone just wanted to hang out. And all of this was done again through social media. So there was a huge, huge mix. 
huge mess. You were kids in, you know, you know like, I think the youngest guy we did was three. We weren't trying to be anything different than what we were. People just kind of understood it straight away and just wanted to be a massive car. And it was, yeah, it was amazing. It's just incredible. And the fact that we're all coming together, it's, it's amazing because we all learn off each other. That's the reason why I wanted these guys to come because they're so talented. You know, it blows me away just watching them. The things get to do to me usually, but then I'll be the rock to the beat. So to see without a doubt, it's my source of vie. Apple tree, but j'ai le goût de snatch to the free true body. See, on a tank of pop, who's my feet? Pour gratis, I sent tirer le popcorn. It's crazy. We've got people that come over, like, literally would drive all the way down to London just purely because they found us on Instagram. Not even to spend their day in Brighton, they literally drive down and then you go, oh, are you going to stay in Brighton? No, I just wanted to come down and get a haircut. I'm going to go back to London. So that's kind of crazy and people fly in from Russia and France and Italy and that's the great thing about Instagram and social media in, in particular because now you've got a bigger platform to put your work out on and you can hashtag and people will find it and if they think that your work's that good, which is just mind-blowing to us, people just keep on coming and, and they travel from everywhere to do it, so it's amazing. Ce que j'ai pour toi, c'est une trotte d'Afrique.